and it's headphones nail. What's up guys and welcome back to Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my latest set of reviews and updates of what I've been doing for the past week. So it's going to be a relatively short episode as I didn't really watch too much new stuff. One show is ending, but it's going to give me time to watch another show. And I have a new plan for a second video game to also play. So uh, with all of that in mind, this week's cover image was generated in Google Gemini with the phrase of a time traveling mutant samurai in space. So the show that ended this week was Shogun. So I had a chance to watch season one, episode 10, A Dream of a Dream. And regardless of how it showed up in the book or how the book dealt with it, um, I found that it was a very good ending. It presented um, and resolved a lot of the storylines, except for one of note in that we get to see, finally learn exactly what um, Toranaga's plan was for becoming the Shogun. Um, he was the one who set the, um, the guy's boat on fire. It was all his plan to have the kingdoms fight against each other. Um, the lady who committed suicide at the in the last episode uh, was working with him as by passing him the note as far as um, having one of the armies betray the council and um, undermining their power against him. So it sets him up for becoming the shogun of Japan. So um, all they accomplish all of this very well in the one episode um, and. He tells that his friend guy who like the whole plan, what was going on, and I liked all of that. The only thing that really didn't make sense to me was the it would look like a fast forward clip of the um, I guess the Dutch or the British guy who was in Japan and like with the long hair, why he had that crazed look. Maybe he, the, I don't know if it was a fast forward or maybe he's now a prisoner or what was going on with all of that. So I didn't quite understand what the point of all of that was, but I did like that they um, set up a potential either second season for Tora Naga to become the Shogun, show that battle and the resulting um, outliers and effects of all of that. Maybe even set up, you know, a quick, you know, movie to show that battle and the after effects. Because from, from the impression that I get from reading stuff online, um, that kind of matches what happened in the book. They don't really do the battle, but they set it up and imply that he's become the Shogun. So um, that's all fine and good. I didn't think they ended the season bad, regardless of how they did this um, book. But it does set them up for a second season um, if they do want to show all of that stuff and um, kind of further along the story, regardless of the source material. Um, so with that being said, I did also watch Star Wars The Bad Batch Flash Strike. So we have the Batch um, making, starting to make their assault on Tantis. Uh, we have Omega doing her recon reconnaissance, learning that they're there to save her. And we have the Empire being the Empire and learning and note or detecting the ship on their sensors and learning that they're being infiltrated. Um, they figure out based on the incursion at the uh, space station and um, all of that that it's the bad batch so they're setting up for the final um episode and um omega also figure finding out that um the empire is up to something and they need to figure out what that is as well and it probably answers all of this stuff so um i'm really curious or i can't or not curious but i can't wait to see what they do do in that final um, episode which i guess at the moment is titled the cavalry has arrived so um, it kind of sounds like they're going to um, have the Bad Batch's incursion into everything, but then also um, the deal with the Empire stuff, which I guess we haven't really gotten the Emperor's speech and everything, which I guess was in the trailer. So um, I'm kind of wondering what's going to happen, or he's probably going to spin that to his advantage, like somehow it's going to 
be um, revealed, like, or else, like, people are going to find out about it, or he's going to have to spin that going forward as far as what's going on with the badge, why, um, um, all, of, I don't know, like, why, or whatever happens is happening at Tansis, somehow, I guess, it's going to get out, so, um, so I'm really curious to see exactly what's going on. I'm sorry, I don't have a perfect way of explaining all of that, but we'll see how it goes in the season finale. Um, for X-Men 97, had a chance to watch Bright Eyes. Um, they're dealing with the effects of the loss of all the mutants and um, Beast loss and trust, kind of shaking his faith in humanity and all of that. So um, we also have, you know, Rogue going Rogue, um, having a cameo experience. Um, meet up with Captain America, so um kind of curious to see if that's going to lead into the X-Men stuff, so not really much to say about that yet. I'm, it's not really a step over episode, but we have, you know, the effects of the prior episodes, so we'll see exactly what happens. Um, no Professor X yet as far as meeting up with the um, X-Men, so we'll see if that's in the next um, episodes or something um, as far as tolerance is extinction um it looks like we have a three part um three part set of episodes for tolerance is extinction so um we'll see if professor x shows up or how it looks but it does sound like for the next three weeks it's going to be dealing with the new threat that shows up i guess in the form of um mr sinister or if there's a greater threat at play um, and then I also had a chance to watch Stargate Continuum. So um, in this case, um, I kind of wanted to round out the story just to watch the film. I always like the interactions between um, Ball and um, General O'Neill. That st what started, which like I mentioned last week, with the whole interrogation thing for Ball and O'Neill when he had the symbiote inside of him. Uh, the back and forth later, as far as dealing with the replicators, um, Dakara, and all of that. So, still a pretty good movie. Um, the whole grandfather paradox doesn't seem to get quite resolved because Shepard is still there, and then they don't really answer what happened to him because of course because with. Uh, Carter and Daniel dying, it works out. Teal is not there to begin with, so the Shepherd is like the loose end. So that's the only thing that really doesn't stand out for me, unless um, because he saves his grandfather and he is his grandfather, he disappears and resolves that. So that would work out, but they didn't really explain that. But overall, still a good movie to watch. It does round out the um, ghoul threat, so they're able to move forward into other missions and endeavors and all that so if they do have a new stargate show they can move into other areas and even potentially do you know a couple season arc like they did with the order right? but with the ancients and um explore that a little bit or go into the past and do you know a legacy show to deal with the ancients and the asgard and the um the four great races so asgard ancients nox and furlings or something which would be really interesting to see um, so with that being said, for the current gameplay, I did start the ba early gameplay for Knights of the Old Republic 2, so I'm doing a what-if style gameplay here where, um, rather than doing a, um, the usual traditional gameplay of what's canon in the game, I'm kind of treating it as what if Revan stayed on the dark side in the events of Knights of the Old Republic 1, but what if the Republic still won, brought him in for questioning, and took away his force powers like they did with the Exile? So kind of playing the story along those lines and what when playing of what he would do if he did that, stayed on the dark side, and um, kind of play along those lines so kind of changing the story up a little bit and playing as Revan the exile and regaining his force powers and dealing with the repercussions um from there so that's kind of where the gameplay is there um I put up the early gameplay for the stuff on Paragus so once we get past that we can move along with the storyline a little bit um as far as mods being used i am using the released content mod to um, have that story arc play out properly and i'm all you i'm still using the all everyone is a jedi mod so i can kind of skip those storylines of converting everyone to a jedi just because it's a very finicky system to do that and i kind of want 
all possible characters that could be Jedi to play them as a Jedi to begin with. So um, that's what I'm doing there. So stay tuned on the YouTube channel for that. And to round it out, uh, something that I forgot to do. So when I reset my phone a couple months ago, I forgot to reinstall the game Roller Coaster Tycoon. So what I'm doing now is I reinstall the game because um, on a podcast I listened to, Play Retro, they recently talked about the game, uh, notably Roller Coaster Tycoons 1 and 2. And so what I thought is that um, to break up just playing one game all the time as I'm playing through a game, I'm going to play one level of Roller Coaster Tycoon a week, put it up on the YouTube channel, and just, you know, try to beat it, of course, but if, regardless of pass or fail, I'm going to just put up a level every week, mostly just because it's time-consuming to play each level at normal speed. I mean, I could fast-forward through it a little to some parts of it like I did in the last one, but... Um, I kind of just want to do one level a week, break up the monotony, play the game, and progress into some areas of the park that I've never played before. So um, in the show notes for this week, I'm including a link to the um, playlist, but I think going forward, I haven't really decided if I want to keep linking to the playlist or link to the latest gameplay for that week. So. Um, I might do the latter just so you get the latest gameplay, but if you want to bookmark the playlist, that's also an option. Um, I will be playing the game on Android as always, so um, that'll be kind of the main caveat that if you want to follow along with the game, that it is on, it is the Android version, so uh, stay tuned for that. But that's kind of the bonus thing that I want to do, that once a week play a level of Roller Coaster at Haikun, share the gameplay of the park I set up. If I pa if I beat it, then you'll see exactly how I finished the level. If I don't, then you can see how I failed and I'll give it another shot or move on or something and try to figure it out. But um, that's kind of what I wanted to do there. So that's all there is for this particular episode. So if you have any questions, comment, feedback, or anything like that, you can comment on the social media sites. Everything is linked up on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. The YouTube channel is youtube.com slash pateln01 for all the gameplay videos. Um, the podcast is up there as well if you want the audio version there. If you want um, an ad-free version of the episode, early access to it, um, along with a copy, a copy of the YouTube version, um, you can support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash pateln01. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in. And, and until next time. And I, before I forget, the one thing I wanted to mention is that now that Shogun is dead um, and the bad batch is about to end as well, um, I'm going to start watching Fallout on Amazon Prime. So as I watch that, I don't know if I'll do a weekly recap or summary, depending on how the episodes go, but... Um, I'll probably give a quick feedback of what I thought of the episodes, whether I watch one or two or whatever until it's done. So, um, stay tuned for that updates coming soon as well. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.